strange and interesting new plant. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had company. Hi, and welcome to What's the Buzz, the only show of its kind that spotlights the entertainment scene in Southern Maryland. I'm your host, James LaFleur, and this is episode number 255. Coming to you from the Port Tobacco Theater in La Plata, Maryland, where the PT players are about to open their latest musical, Little Shop of Horrors. Yay. Uh, we just sat through a performance, and I I'm just absolutely thrilled. It is so exciting. It's going to please a lot of people. and some very tired actors and one very tired director, uh, but they agreed to give me a little bit of time to get to know you a little bit. Uh, the director, Kyle Rappi, and three cast members, Jake Javi, who plays Seymour, Autumn Mallory, who plays Audrey, and Richard Lehman, who plays, we'll get to that in, in a minute. Uh, most people are familiar with the 1986 dark horror comedy, which, interestingly enough, was directed by Frank Oz, which a lot of people don't realize he was the puppeteer and voice behind Miss Piggy. I think it's interesting. Uh, it was written by Alan Menken and Howard Ashman. And a lot of people also don't realize it originally started as a 1960 black and white movie uh, by Roger Corman, not a musical, but most notably starring Jack Nicholson as the dental patient. I give him a lot of credit to go to Oren as his dentist. Um, so Richard, you're, um, you're a plant from outer space. Right, that you're discovered during a total eclipse of the sun. Okay, how did you choose what voice to give Audrey? Um, I listen. I guess um, I listen to a bunch of different versions of Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. I think I probably pulled on maybe some Disney characters. Probably a little bit of. Um, um, from Rocky Horror Picture Show, the, what's the Sweet Transvestite, what was his name? Uh, oh, Frankenfurter. Frankenfurter, right. yes, I might do a little bit of that. So I kind of pulled from a bunch of different voices and kind of messed it all together. And... I didn't know what to expect. I mean, the, <laughs> the movie uses Levi Stubbs from the four tops. Yeah. So um, it was very cool. It, it, it was very effective, the choices you used. Now, I'm not Levi Stubbs. I, I, my plan is a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, you know, I mean, a, little, a little bit of everything. So now, it's, it's, it's not a traditional Audrey team. Knowing you, you're a massage therapist, uh, you have dance, you hold dance and kettle classes. Where do you kettle. find time for theater? Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it just turns off the phone, and goes the to the theater, and, and, yeah. and that's it. It's a, it's a lifeblood. I haven't done it in so long, so I'm so happy to be back to doing it again. Well, I understand you have an interesting anecdote about PTP, don't you? Oh, it was really funny. During the first rehearsal, everyone goes around the table and like, oh, how many shows have you done here? And I'm like, oh, this is my ninth show at Port Tobacco Players. And everyone's like, as of the last show I did was Sound of Music, I think. Um, that was in the 80s before Madonna. I did, uh, Port Tobacco Players was the first theater I ever did in middle school performing. So I feel like I've come full circle yeah, full many circle. years later. So, yeah. now, now, Jake, uh, your, your performance as Seymour was everything I had hoped it would be. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the movie. I've been watching it, you know. Once a year since 1986, and um, you you really you really brought Seymour to life. Thank um, you. How do you connect with with Seymour? I mean, what what parts of Seymour are you, and, and what parts of you are not in Seymour? So to answer that question, I would say that I think that Seymour represents um, a younger adolescent version of myself, um, and that's sort of where I relate and connect with Seymour. Um, however, Seymour and I are the same age, but I feel as if um, Seymour's psychological development has been stifled by um, the abuse that he's experienced in sort of this miserable working class condition that he's in. I mean, he's internalized the message that you will never amount to anything. No matter what you do, you are set up for failure. Um, and um, that's really stifled his development and made him very naive and childish. Um, so I remember when I was around 12, 13 years old, feeling similar things that Seymour felt, and I've been 
very much in tune with his vulnerabilities and sensitivities. Cool. I personally feel like I've progressed beyond that, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, let's, 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 but I, yeah, but I'm still uh, I still have a lot of empathy for a character like Sue. But and it comes out in in your performance. It's amazing. What what is your daytime job? I'm dying to dying to know. I'm an English teacher. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, here, sat in Charles County, or yes, I teach at Thomas Stone High School here in uh, Charles County. I teach mobile. So, wow, so many teachers that we, we run into in, yeah. in theater. So many people. I guess it's a yeah. high stress occupation. And at the end of the day, they're like, ah, I'll go to the theater now and play somebody else. Um, what is your background in theater? So I did theater in high school, and I knew that I wanted to keep performing um, when I went to college, so I got the opportunity to perform at St. Mary's College of Maryland, which is where I went to school. I got the chance to be in Spring Awakening, which was a lot of fun, and then I became a teacher, and I knew that I needed to keep performing, so um, the Port Tobacco players welcomed me with open arms when I did 12 Angry Jurors this summer, slash fall, and yeah, I'm never going back. So, Jake, what's your favorite song to sing in the show? It wasn't my favorite song to sing when I started out. When I started out performing it, because my voice cracked a lot. But <laughs> um, my favorite song to sing is my solo in "Feed Me Slash Get It," mm -hmm. which is the song that I sing with Richard, Mr. Roger Two over here. And yeah, it's just really fun to wail out those notes because I didn't think I had it in me three months ago. Well, the props are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the the plant, which. Well, we can't say much about the plan, right? We're trying to keep a, an element of surprise, right? I mean, if people don't know about it by now, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I'll say, I thought Richard was inside the plan. I would have sworn Richard was inside the plan. But I guess you have a, a, a team of puppeteers that we do, yeah, that we do that. A team too, yeah. They're awesome. Autumn Mallory, who plays Audrey. I don't want to embarrass you. We know each other from, you know, <laughs> and, and Newtown players, and you're absolutely one of our favorites every year during Night on Broadway. As a matter of fact, I make my wife crazy because it's usually some song that you have sung that sticks in my head for three or four weeks. <laughs> Last time was the Wednesday Adams song. Oh. Um, now, interesting note, um, during the day, you are a pilot, aren't you? Well, I don't work as a pilot, but I, um, yeah, I do have my private pilot license. <laughs> that, that is very good. How did, how did that come about? Um, well, I mean, I, well, it was during COVID, starting up yet mm -hmm. and I was kind of just looking for something to do and that was something that was available to me that I had heard about years ago and I, was, I just found myself with a lot of time on my hands and I'm like well I don't like that so I'm just going to dive into this new thing and and yeah, no pun intended yeah. I, mean, I started <laughs> like oh yeah so now I get to travel like that so. now uh, Audrey's voice I, again being a big fan of the movie and knowing what Ellen Green sounds like I mean were you given the option to be a little more cartoony or or, you know, more realistic? Or... So, I mean, I've played around. I mean, definitely it developed over the course of from auditions to now. Um, I, I didn't really want to be like Ellen Green. I wanted to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And my biggest thing was that I didn't want her to sound too annoying or anything like that. She's got to be likable. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Kyle and I worked together on, um, you know, the lines and, and how we're going to say everything. And, um, and we kind of, it just kind of just like fell into what it is now. So... I like to think it's just like a, you know, it's a cute, uh, kind of nasally um, accent, um, but not too out there, you know. It is. Um, what do you want audiences to take away from your portrayal of Audrey? What, what should they feel about that? Well, I, I want them to be, I mean, sad that she, <laughs> I don't know how to say anything about the end, I guess, mm -hmm. but um, I want her, they've been to root for her pretty much. Okay. I want... I want them to root for her and see more to be together. I don't want them to pity her um, as much as I want them to, to just, you know, be excited for her when she finally gains that confidence and things like that. Mm -hmm. What song did you sing in auditions? I'm just being nosy because I, was, <laughs> I wasn't there. So. Uh, I sang There's a Fine Fine Line from Avenue Q. Uh -huh. What did you sing? I sang What You Own from Red. I love that. Uh, can we do a duet later, like yeah. after, after the show? And like, oh, yeah, you're wrong. Uh, Richard, what did you say? I'm saying, so you wanted to meet the wizard from the leaves. Oh, okay, very cool. Um, Did you know that song? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the standard TV talk show host answer when you say something I don't know is, oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, Kyle, 
Rafi, yeah. the director. Um, did you let the cast watch the movie? Did you encourage them not to? How does that work? Yeah, they could have watched it if they wanted to. Um, I think with such a, 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 a cult classic that a lot of people know about, uh, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with looking at uh, source material to try to figure out your character. But I, d- I definitely encourage them to figure out their, their own way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie or not, it, it, it would up for them. I'm going to guess this is not your first directing, uh, directorial job. Uh, no. uh, this is number seven, I think. Oh, all, all here? No, I did uh, three here. No, two, no Very cool. Did it ever uh, seem at a time that this show just might be too big and it's just hard to rein in on a, on a smaller stage? Um, yes. Uh, we have our rehearsal hall in the back. Right. It's a much smaller space. Mm-hmm. And, and so when you, you work back there with, with all the blocking, it works out just fine. But then as soon as you come out here and you have more space, everything changes. Mm-hmm. And then you throw walls up and everything shrinks some more. And then you put a plant, then everything changes again. So just keeping adding elements week after week after week mm-hmm. uh, definitely made it challenging to adapt. Now, speaking of the plant, uh, mm-hmm. was that created here at PTP or is that something no, we, that is we, we rent rentable? Yeah. Um, I, I guess they probably rent them all out for every company that's doing Shelf cars, right? Yeah. Uh, every production staff member I have asked me, I'll do it if I don't have to make the plan. Mm-hmm. And so I said, we're going to rent it. So they all turned out. Okay. Um, I'm from New York, so I was listening for a little the detections of New York accent. Were, were the actors instructed to sound like 1950s, 60s New Yorkers, or is that just come out in the dialogue? Um, it's some of it, some of the dialogue kind of lends itself to mm-hmm. a bit of that accent, uh, but it wasn't a, a, a huge emphasis for us. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm interested in is the three actors. What did they do that signaled that, oh, that's definitely Seymour, that's definitely Audrey, that's definitely a large growth <laughs> plant? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, things that I could probably point to, but I, I think just each of their energies that they brought to auditions and some of the callbacks was just, I mean, you sit there watching and just go, okay, that's it. Uh-huh. Um, we had a lot of really great people come out, uh, but in the end, it, it just it just clicked. I honestly don't have any one thing. Like, you know, and you know why I'm particularly fun. interested in, because someday you're going to be directing something here and I'm going to audition. <laughs> I'm going to say, I remember that he said I, to, to I do easy, this. I'm easily bribed with baked goods. Oh, okay, uh, good. So you know, uh, no, no problem. We always have uh, cheesecake in the house. Good. Um, was it a difficult show to direct? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I thought, um, obviously, technically challenging. It certainly was, mm-hmm. was, but everybody worked so well together and worked so hard mm-hmm. that despite all the stuff that was going on, especially in, in, in January, December, we had to start masking up during rehearsal. Mm-hmm. And with that, um, everybody put in so much effort and just enjoyed working with each other that it, it made it a whole lot easier. Okay. I think we definitely should shout out some of the, the people who are not here, the the three urchins. Yes. The uh, singers are amazing, who, who function, I guess, as narrators and keep the story flowing and mm-hmm. keep it understandable. Absolutely amazing. And wait till you meet Orin the dentist. Oh. He's, that's quite a quite a character. And you've got terrible taste in men. <laughs> Only in theater, not not in real life, of course. Um, nine piece band, right? In the in the pit, or I think it's nine or ten. I think it's nine. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, terrific, terrific band. Um, before I let this go. Um, are there two different endings that you can buy when you when you're shopping for the script, or is no. this the way, aside from the fact it's different from the movie, this is the stage show? This is the stage show. There are no alternate endings. Okay. Yeah, there okay. are different um, uh, 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 arrangements that are available in the script, like mm-hmm. the different keys that some of the songs are in, but the endings. But I tell you, if you are a fan of the movie. Do not let that not keep you from coming because it is it is a little different, surprisingly different, wonderfully different. So just definitely do not miss this. Now, um, okay, actors, who has the most fun with their role? 
Justin. Yeah. <laughs> audiences the most about the show? The vocal talents. Oh. I'll go along with that. <laughs> At least I think so. When I got to rehearsals and I heard all these wonderful voices, I said, wow, this is a production of Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is it okay for children? Uh, I think we're giving it like a PG-13 rating. Okay, that sounds, yeah. sounds all right. So i um, surprised they let me in. <laughs> uh, how long does the show run? Uh, with, with, with intermission? Should be just under two hours. Okay. All right. So now, details. The show opens March 11th and runs till April 3rd. Friday and Saturday night performances are at 8 p.m. Sundays are at 3. Friends at Newtown, note at 3 o'clock, not 3.30, what we used to over there. Uh, located on Route 6, Charles Street in La Plata. As per the CDC, masks and vax cards required. You can get tickets at ptplayers.com. Adults are $20, seniors over 60, that wouldn't be me, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> students and military with your ID is 17. That's it. I want to thank my sponsor, Purple Post Real Estate, give him a call, you can work with me, uh, my producer, who does everything, and my wife, Kevin Laporte, and our creative consultant, magician, Reggie Rice. Um, thank you for Report Tobacco for having us. Please like, share, comment, subscribe on Facebook and YouTube, you know, do all those things so you don't miss any coverage of any one of these great shows that we cover in any number of different theaters. Uh, we appreciate it more than you know. So you, my friends, have been watching What's the Buzz. Take care.